Hey everybody, Home Slice Henry here, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a brand new Pokemon in the world of Pokemon Go, Meowskarada. These battles were submitted to the channel by a member of the community, Ewinky, so many thanks for the battle submission. Now, Meowskarada is the final evolution of the Paldea Grass Starter. It is a grass and dark type Pokemon with the moveset of Leafage, Night Slash, and Grass Knot, and this thing is absurdly attack weighted, meaning it can output massive damage, but it cannot take a hit whatsoever. So without further ado, let's up for the matches and check out Meowskarada in the Great League. Hopping into the first match and off to a very rough start leading Meowskarada into Talonflame and we see an immediate save switch into Defense Deoxys. I really like how this team is constructed, with Meowskarada being the grass and dark type definitely going to struggle against fighters, so the two psychic types in the back provide some nice coverage. Unfortunately, the Deoxys save switch is answered by Trevenant. Trevenant can comfortably tank two psycho boosts and still maintain switch advantage, but the opponent makes a bit of a misplay. They shield the second psycho boost and maybe that can provide a window of opportunity to potentially trying to flip this game. Talonflame is still going to be a massive issue. Back in comes Meowskarada. This is going to be resisted, but Meowskarada is very frail. That still does quite a lot of damage. Meowskarada continuing to farm up. Trevenant firing off another charge move. It's the Seed Bomb, and we do see the shield from Meowskarada. Aggressive switch by the opponent as they send back in the Talonflame. Talonflame hit by the Night Slash, and we see a boost from Meowskarada, but the Incinerate would have KO'd, so Meowskarada is forced to switch out. Talonflame going for the Flame Charge, looking to continually buff up its attack. Talonflame at the back-to-back -back here, Flame Charge number two, does quite a lot of damage into that Cresselia. Cresselia opting to go for a Grass Knot Bait here, anticipating the shield and getting the shield. Is this going to allow Cresselia to make the Moon Blast? Yes, it does. The Grass Knot Bait is a risky gambit, but it pays off as Talonflame will be put into a range where it can be farmed down. In comes the Trevenant. Trevenant will be KO'd by the Night Slash. You have to hope it's something weak to grass in the back, and it's a Lantern. This is exactly what Meowskarada needed, and on one HP, it makes it to the Grass Knot. Grass Knot KOs the Lantern, and that's a good game. Picking up a favorable lead in the next match, Meowskarada into Carbink. Opponent is staying in this matchup to start with the Carbink. They're now going to save switch into Metacham, and Metacham will meet a wall in defense Deoxys. Deoxys is going to do extremely well into the Metacham, as Metacham is forced to go for Ice Punch, which is non-stab and isn't the greatest move overall. Deoxys can put it into a range where two Thunderbolts should just about be enough to KO, but Metacham committing the shield. They are trying to make a play for switch advantage here, but switch advantage honestly isn't super important because Cresselia can also do pretty well here. Opponent now going to go for the Psychic. It does slightly more damage than an Ice Punch, even though it is resisted. Thunderbolt will connect. Deoxys farming up. Opponent is going to aggressively switch back into the Carbank, and Carbank is firing off its Rock Slide. Rock Slide will be shielded up. Again, Meowskarada is absurdly glassy it cannot take a hit whatsoever Meowskarada firing off the grass knot into the carbink carbink able to tank it but they will get farmed down if the opponent sends back in the metacham metacham will be met with the loaded night slash here night slash putting pressure on that final shield opponent is going to commit the shield and get the counter down but now you can just send in Cresselia, Psycho Cut down, and Cresselia up a shield should hopefully do pretty well here. Opponent went for the blind psychic, and they concede the match. Moving into the next match, hitting Meowskarada into Ninetales. This will depend on the fast move here. It is Charm, but we see a safe switch anyway into the Deoxys. Opponent now going to respond with a Hypno, and Hypno, of course, could potentially have access to Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball, definitely not a good time for Defense Deoxys. Deoxys goes for the Thunderbolt. We see a shield from the Hypno. Hypno farming up a massive amount of energy here. They did farm past the Shadow Ball, so maybe they're on the Double Punch moveset. Deoxys is going to let it go, calling that it's the Double Punch moveset, and it is Thunder Punch comes through from the Hypno. Hypno going for Thunder Punch number two. We will see the No Shield from the Deoxys. Oh, the Hypno actually did have Shadow Ball the whole time. They definitely should have just gone for the Shadow Ball. They're going to save the Hypno for later, aggressively switching in the Ninetales. They did not want to have that Thunder Punch Shadow Ball Hypno stuck against Meowskarada, but now 
This means that the Charmer is going to get aligned against the Cresselia. Cresselia firing off the Moonblast. Moonblast will be shielded by the Ninetales and gets the Moonblast attack debuff. That is a very low likelihood of happening. So a little bit of good luck in this match. Cresselia over farming quite a bit here and going for the Moonblast at 100 energy. Moonblast into the Alolan Ninetales will just not be lethal, but the Psycho Cut after will be. The opponent has energy on the Hypno, but the Hypno's energy does nothing into Meowskarada, and Meowskarada gets the snipe with the Night Slash. Night Slash KOs the Hypno in the back. It's a whiz cash, and these water types in the back are having a truly awful day as Meowskarada gets the KO. Honestly, it's massive overkill with the Grass Knight. Moving into the next match, getting Meowskarada into Bastiodon. Bastiodon has a massive bulk advantage. Opponent save switches into Metacham, and we see an immediate counter switch into Defense Deoxys. I would have preferred to see the counter switch into Cresselia there, is that way you can still very comfortably keep switch from the Metacham, but that way you can save the Deoxys for the Bastiodon. Whereas now Bastiodon going up against Cresselia and Meowskarada is going to be a bit uncomfortable. This is actually a power up punch and psychic Metacham, so the Metacham is boosting its attack. Farming up with the Deoxys. They're firing off another power-up punch here. They are just trying to fully brute force their way through the Psychic type. Farming up a ton of energy with the Deoxys. Deoxys going for the Thunderbolt into the Metacham. Metacham double shielding. Deoxys makes the Psycho Boost. This is not a range where Psycho Boost will KO, but it will get that Metacham pretty low. Metacham looking for the farm down and just manages to get the farm down. Metacham leaves very boosted, but its energy is walled by Cresselia here. So Cresselia will be able to absorb whatever they throw. They go for another power-up punch, just continuing to boost their attack more and more. But even if they go for a Psychic here, Cress will still be able to tank this. Cress looking for the farm down. Cress honestly taking a lot of damage from these boosted power-up punches. Cress is going to get the farm down in the back. It's the Shadow Victory Bell. Victory Bell will be hit with the Resistant Moonblast. That still does a solid chunk of damage. The Psycho Cuts will, of course, hit for super effective. And no catch from the opponent on the Moonblast. That is massive. Moonblast is going to get the KO. In comes Meowskarada. And a boost would be really nice for dealing with the bulky Bastiodon. Night Slash connects. And we see the boost. Let's go, Meowskarada. Meowskarada with a boost. Now going for the Grass Knot here going up against the most toxic team in the game grass Knot does nice damage meow scarada gets the bastion on 2-1 hp and this will end up being a victory it's always a good day when grass hole loses as cresselia takes the win we see a tricky lead in the next match meow scarada into wall rain both Pokemon hitting each other for super effective damage here. Meowskarada will get to the Night Slash when Walrin gets to the Icicle Spear. Opponent not familiar with the moveset is going to shield up a Night Slash. The thing is, is this Meowskarada is taking so much damage from these Powder Snows. Meowskarada farming up and making a very nice catch, saving the Night Slash for later and catching the Icicle Spear onto Defense Deoxys. Defense Deoxys will be answered with Scrafty. Scrafty is going to be able to fire off the Foul Play here, and since Deoxys already took some chip damage, this Foul Play will just about KO. Deoxys able to hang on and make the last second Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt will be no shielded by the opponent, and this is a very uncomfortable health range for this team to get rid of, because Cresselia is going to have to farm all the way up to a Grass Knot to get rid of the Scrafty here, and it's not like you can send in Meowskarada into the counter user. Foul Play connects, that does quite a bit of damage, and this game is honestly looking a bit tough as this Scrafty put in a ton of work. Grass Knot will get the KO. Opponent still has the Wall Rain, and in the back, they have Tox Effects, and this is just looking like it's over. Opponent is gonna send in the Wall Rain. Wall Rain will be able to absorb the Grass Knot here, but Tox Effects is just way too bulky. Wall Rain actually shields, which is a bit of a surprise, but either way, I mean, Tox Effects just has the game won. Like, unfortunately, there's just not enough damage output with Cresselia not having Future Sight, where the Toxapex is going to be able to absorb the Grass Knot from the Cresselia and the Grass Knot from the Meowskarada as well. They're firing off the charge move. I mean, they can just go straight for the Brine here, and they do. They go for the Brine, now going to fire off the Grass Knot. Meowskarada, of course, has a way higher attack stat and gets same type attack bonus, but it's still not enough to KO the bulky Toxapex. Toxapex, just an absolute beast, and that's game over. 
picking up a tough lead in the next match. Meowskarada into Hitmontop. We see an immediate safe switch into Cresselia, and the Hitmontop is staying in this matchup. They farm up a ton of energy, they bank a close combat for later, and they're now going to send in Gligar. But this is a matchup that up energy, Cresselia has the potential to flip. Cresselia is going to land the Grass Knot. Unfortunately, this is not the Shadow. With the Shadow, you can sometimes land double Grass Knot and Cycle Cut Down, but with the regular, you're going to need more charge moves than that. Firing off Grass Knot number two, opponent is going to let that through. Cresselia going for Grass Knot number three. And the unfortunate thing here is even if shields are potentially grabbed, it's not like this energy is something that Meowskarada wants to see either. The opponent's team so far extremely hostile to Meowskarada. Cresselia farming up, going for the Grass Knot here, putting pressure on that final shield. Opponent lets it go, and that is absolutely massive to get switched. In comes Hitmontop. They're probably going for the Triple Axle here, looking to boost up their damage. The boosted counters are going to get the farm down, but now the Hitmontop is stuck going up against Defense Deoxys. Defense Deoxys will be able to absorb the boosted Triple Axle, no problem. Deoxys looking to overfarm slightly and go for the kill shot with the Psycho Boost. Opponent lets it go in the back. They have Pseudo, and Pseudo is unfortunately running counter. These counters shredding through Meowskarada, but Meowskarada is hitting for super effective damage with the Leafage as well. Meowskarada firing off the Night Slash into Pseudo here. Pseudo, only one shield remaining. They're going to use it here. Meowskarada makes it to the last second Night Slash, able to withstand those non-stab counters. Night Slash gets the Pseudo to a sliver of HP, and Deoxys gets the win. Picking up a great lead in the next match, Meowskarada into Lantern. Opponent save switches into Gligar, and odds are this is probably a double flyer team, so switch advantage will be very important in this game. As Meowskarada, of course, absolutely destroys Lantern, but against basically any flying type, it's going to have a very rough time. Gligar connects with the dig, Cresselia fires off the Grass Knot, and gets a shield from the Gligar. Since Gligar landed the dig, they can probably just go for Aerial Aces here. They actually end up full sending the dig, so that is a pretty big shield. Shield. Cresselia at the back-to-back -back Grass Knots here, looking to put some pressure onto the Gligar. Gligar is going to let that through, and now go in for another Grass Knot. This will not KO, but it will get the Gligar quite low. Gligar able to hang on. Cresselia looking for the farm down here. Cresselia choosing to let this go. Is it the dig? Yes, it is. Cresselia cannot make the move, and the opponent takes switch. And that is a bit unfortunate here, as now that means if there's another flyer in the back, and it seems likely that there is, that this flying type is going to be lined up against Meowskarada. Now it's Deoxys versus the Lantern. Deoxys is going to strike first, going for the Thunderbolt. This is only neutral. Lantern can very comfortably tank this. We see a switch into Meowskarada, and in the back, it is Shadow Charizard, and this is extremely unfortunate. Meowskarada does big damage with the Night Slash, but it's not going to be enough. The Charizard is able to fire off the Dragon Claw, get the shield, go in for the last second Night Slash here, but unfortunately, the opponent can just shield here, and then Charizard will be able to make the Blast Burn before Deoxys makes the move. In comes the Deoxys, and yeah, Deoxys knows it's over. Shadow Charizard, too good of energy, and that's game over. Hopping into the final match, we have a battle of grass types, Meowskarada versus Venusaur. Meowskarada farming up, going for the Night Slash just before they make it to the Sludge Bomb, but it looks like the opponent is just going straight Frenzy Plant. We see the Night Slash get shielded, and we see the boost from Meowskarada. Meowskarada shielding up the Frenzy Plant. Honestly, even a resisted Frenzy Plant will just about KO from this health range, so this will be interesting to see. Meowskarada now going for the boosted Night Slash. That does massive damage into the Venusaur. Let's see. Honestly, I think this might KO. That's how glassy this thing is. Frenzy Plant nearly KOs, and it's a simultaneous feint. Oh my goodness. Meowskarada is just absurdly glassy. In comes Deoxys into Galarian Stunfisk. Deoxys farming up energy, switching into the Cresselia as the opponent fires off the Earthquake. Earthquake going to do a lot less damage to Crest than it does to Deoxys. In the back, it is Pelipper farming up with the Cresselia. Pelipper is going to strike first, going for the Weather Ball. So they're going for the more consistent route of double Weather Ball instead of having to risk a potential Hurricane getting shielded. I honestly like that decision from the opponent. Grass Knot will connect onto the Pelipper. Cresselia going for the Grass Knot. Pelipper continuing to farm. Grass Knot into the Pelipper will be shielded. Pelipper looking for the farm down, gets the farm down, and Pelipper will win CMP over the Deoxys. Deoxys firing off the Thunderbolt here, losing CMP. 
Weather Ball will connect. Thunderbolt is finally going to get rid of the Pelipper. There's still the G-Fisk left alive in the back, though. And this is going to need a lot of counters to get rid of it. Continuing to farm up with the Deoxys. The Stunfisk just opting to go for the Rock Slide here. They definitely needed to build up to the Earthquake to at least threaten the shield. Because going Triple Rock Slide is not a path to victory here. As you're going to see, Deoxys will make the back-to-back -back Psycho Boost. Psycho Boost number one will get them to a fraction of HP. And Psycho Boost number two will secure the KO for the Deoxys. And now some final thoughts on Meowskarada and its viability in the Grey League. First off, I think Meowskarada is in a very difficult spot where its stats just translate extremely poorly from the main series to Pogo. In the main series, having something that's absurdly attack weighted can have a lot of play, whereas unfortunately in Go, having just absolutely no bulk whatsoever oftentimes just ends up being a massive liability. Where in this case, I would say you can have Pokemon that are decently attack weighted, that can still do pretty well, but for specifically for Miascarada, it's just way too glassy. Even if it gets Frenzy Plant in the future, I don't really see this Pokemon having a ton of viability. So if you are grinding the starters, you can definitely grab one if you want to, but I would say the priorities, first off, is definitely going to be Skeledurge, and after that, potentially Quackwivel. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support guys provide is sincerely appreciated. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.